The audiophile world has plenty of big names. Sennheiser, AKG, Sony, Odyssey. But these guys don't make good cables. I mean, they say they make good cables, but they don't. It is a virtual guarantee that an audiophile will, one day, buy cables for their speakers or headphones or amplifiers. There are three certainties in life. Death, taxes, and audiophile cable expenses. I'm not talking about spending $500 for one headphone cable, that's totally nuts. I'm talking about getting a better feeling, better constructed cable for your favorite headphones or audio setup. Here's the thing. Audio enjoyment is a journey, a very personal one. Someone can spend years experimenting with sources and headphones until they find the perfect match. Others can, on their very first attempt, be totally content. And when this audio nirvana has been achieved, the audiophile is still restless. The custom audio cable is just the cherry on top of the glorious banana split sundae. It may be small, but it does make things look, well, look right. You can spend hundreds of dollars on audio cables. Those inclined to do so are a very special breed. But those who want quality products at an affordable price have many options of varying consistency. You can currently buy headphone cables on Amazon for between $50 and $100. You can buy them from Periapt from between $70 and $100. Or you can buy them on eBay for oscillating prices. I have several Periapt cables and I like them a lot. They are quality. But for some, Periapt is still a little expensive. There is a clear alternative now to both Amazon and eBay and Periapt. It's called Heart Audio Cables. They have two very unique attributes that distinguish them from every other cable manufacturer. First, their hand-built cables cost between $27 and $37, and by the way, all built in the United States. Second, they have an interconnect system that is paired with all of their cables. Each interconnect costs between $12 and $17, or you can buy a kit with all their interconnects for about $75. Now, the efficacy of this system might be a little hard to understand at first. I get it. I was a bit confused myself until I tried it. And now, I'm converted. I purchased the $75 interconnect kit and an Odyssey ZMF Bounds cable. I also asked Heart Audio whether they could make a cable for the Monolith M1570 based on the unique Monolith printouts. And they did, and sent that cable for free. I will conduct a full review of these products in a few days. But I'll say this much, everything is stellar quality. Oh, and the 1570 cable works perfectly. There is no overcurrent with this cable. I have been communicating with James Alvarado, the founder of Heart Audio Cables. We started talking in November 2019. I have never emailed someone as much as I have with James. Over 40 emails. That might be considered stalking in some jurisdictions. Once I received my order from Heart Audio, I was more than impressed. So, I offered to interview James. At first, it was going to be over email, then maybe a brief phone conversation. We both finally agreed to have a lengthy recorded telephone conversation. The following is an unedited discussion between me and James from today, February 8th, 2020. I'll let you listen to it now. At the end, I'll chime in and give you my closing thoughts. Here we go. Um, all right, so the, the, the question I have for you starting out is, how are you able to make your cables as affordable um, as you can compared to other companies that sell cables for double the cost uh, minimum. Right, right. So um, I started to tell you this earlier, but um, when I when I started it, you know, part of my the impetus for me starting it was that I was frustrated with the price points for custom cables when I was shopping for them myself, you know. And so I decided to just make them myself. And, um, you know, through that process, you know, I had a buddy of mine who's like, well, why don't you, you know, maybe look into selling them? And so I started looking at that and I was looking at how much it would cost me to do it and some other factors, right? Like just about how I want to go about making the product unique and 
what would uh, set us apart and stuff like that. And I realized, you know, I could, I could sell it at this price point and still make plenty of margin. And so, I mean, it was a concerted effort from the beginning to just try to like get the price point down uh, somewhere that I thought was reasonable. Cause like, I think us in the hobby, <clears throat> we start to look at like a $500 pair of headphones and that's reasonable. But for like the vast majority of people who uh, might want a pair of headphones, that is really expensive. So like even like the HE4XX from Hi-Fi Man, right? And Drop, like that's a $130 pair of headphones and on forums and everything, us in, in the hobby, we're like, man, those are super cheap. There's no reason not to try them, right? But like mm -hmm. for... 90% of people who get into the hobby or whatever, or just start to dabble in it, that is like the most expensive pair of headphones I'll ever buy, you know, or it's the most expensive pair of headphones they've bought thus far. That's expensive. And those people, that cable that comes with those headphones is awful. So like they decide, okay, I want a different cable than this. You know, they, they're dabbling on Reddit or whatever. They see people have these custom cables and they go look. And then now they're, they go look on these uh, third party sellers offering cables and they cost more than the pair of headphones they just bought. And I feel like, there, there wasn't really a good option for, for folks who don't want to spend a huge amount of money on them. And, uh, you know, they don't, they don't just want like the Amazon basics cable or whatever you get off of Amazon, you know, they want, you know, something with a, a little bit more high end quality feel. So when I was doing it, I guess I realized, you know, I could, uh, keep the prices relatively low. And, and I mean, the short answer too, is I take lower margins than competitors probably. I mean, I think, margins on most stuff uh, folks are selling are really, really high. And to me, it's like, you know, I understand that people are buying it and you can put it at that price, but you know, it doesn't need to be <laughs> that much, you know? So, um, you know, I haven't, yeah, I, I haven't heard of uh, any company that sits down and says, I'll take my bare minimum margins instead <laughs> of trying to hike it up. So I, I appreciate you. Right. So when I started it, you know, it was like, for me, I already have a day job. You know what I mean? Like I have a nine to five. I'm a, I'm a, a product development engineer for a large corporation that most folks have probably heard of. And um, not that I like wouldn't, wouldn't love to quit my day job and do this. But, you know, if I was going to start a business, I just want to feel like everything we do adds value to customers for the customer. So like, just because we can charge $5 more doesn't really necessarily mean we should, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, an example is like, I hate like when companies like Sennheiser is super guilty of it. Like where they, they, they do like the unique connectors that only their connector is going to work on their headphone. And there's no reason to do that. Like there's no value you're, you're adding the, to, to the customer's experience, except that they have to buy the replacement cable from you instead of somebody else. Right. And to me, that's just like, I understand capitalism, you make more money, but uh, if it doesn't like really truly provide value to the customer, I, I don't really want to have anything to do with it. You know what I mean? So it's kind of taking that ethos to the business, at least trying, you know, we've been open maybe we started in September. It's, it's like five months here. So we'll see if I'm an idiot and these lower prices will uh, backfire on me or not. But so far, so good. And, and the other thing too is like, when I started it, you know, it was supposed to be supplemental income. You know, I thought I'd be making like 20 orders a month. And I mean, I, I showed you some of those numbers uh, over email, you know, and we're, we're doing 200 orders on average a month right now. So it's a little crazier than I expected it to be. So, Well, it just goes to show how many people really want to get good quality cables for a decent price. Right, right. And, and I feel like there is a price point like where – somebody goes and looks at a, at a cable and then they're going to make this decision, whether it's like, it's too expensive. I'll just go try to make my own or I'll just do it without. Right. And, and I want them to, I want I felt like there is a, you could get to a price point where it's, 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 le, it, it's inexpensive enough that it doesn't warrant them taking the time and the effort to go learn how to make their own cable. You know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. take this one. It's, it's reasonably priced, you know, and I was trying to hit that. And I, I feel like maybe, <laughs> maybe we did, maybe we didn't. I don't know. Well, in a similar vein, I, I when I asked uh, my subscribers how they would feel about doing this interview, I did a poll, and one of the individuals 
posted a comment and he asked me to ask you this question. So if you can answer the question, <laughs> great. If you can't, that's fine. So here's sure. your question. question uh, quote, I'm curious what type of cable they use. If they are using OFC, then I am out. Four wires OCC, 9N copper is the bare <laughs> minimum, and I make cables myself. So <laughs> right. can you comment on that in any way? <laughs> so like the thing about OCC cable is like as soon as you switch to that, your your material cost goes up like uh, by a factor of two at least, right? probably three in most cases, which means I have to forward that cost onto the customer, which is – I just spent this whole long spiel explaining why, how we wanted to keep prices reasonable and stuff. So for us, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me to want to, I just don't have a desire to get into like these super high end uh, OCC style cables and charge customers 300 bucks a pop for a, for a pair of cables. It's just not, uh, it's not something I'm interested in personally. So like all of our product is stuff that I wanted myself. You know what I mean? Like it all started around what I would want personally. And then people were like, Hey, maybe some other people might want that too. And so for me, it's just not something I'm ever going to be interested in. And like, I'm never going to buy myself a $300 pair of, uh, of cables. You know, it's just not, not something I'm, I'm into. So I don't foresee us ever dabbling in anything like that. That being said, we use high quality cable. We use Mogami, uh, cable and I won't say what the specific uh, model is because it's already hard enough to source and um, I'd hate for it to get more difficult on us to source it. So, um, yeah, we use one of Mogami's uh, types of cables and it is OFC and uh, I'm sorry that I lost a customer who only wants OCC, but uh, it's just, you know, there's plenty of places that already sell that, you know what I mean? And, um, do you have any experience personally listening to OCC cables? No, 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 no. But like, I'm pretty confident in saying I won't be able to help hear the difference, you know, me personally. But uh, other people might. I, I have hearing damage. I've been in band for a long time, toured and d done that stuff, and uh, had one too many practices and shows right in where earplugs. So anything in the higher frequency range above like 16 kilohertz or 17 kilohertz. 18, you know, I, I can't hear it anyway. So, uh, yeah, I probably couldn't tell the difference between OCC and OFC. And, and I feel like there's much bigger factors that go into stuff that you can hear before the cable even comes into play. I realize I may be losing customers here. I'm a cable manufacturer explaining to people why the cable doesn't matter. But, uh, um, yeah, I, I just uh, personally... I, I I think the vast majority of my subscribers actually appreciate brutal honesty and straightforwardness over the typical audiophile. Right, right, right. So I, I think I think at least with my subscribers, you're probably going to get get more traction. Being so that's as you are. So that's a thing. So like I, 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 you know, pretty regularly have people email me and ask me like, how much better is my cable going to sound than than uh, somebody else's? What's the difference between your cable? your $50 cable and a $275 cable. And to them, I just say about $225 is the difference to me, you know? Um, but to other people, they swear by it. And I'm not going to disagree with them, you know? And, and I told, I told you this in the email, like, luckily, you know, I don't really have an interest in getting into a conversation about like Sonics with a sub hundred dollar cable. Like I feel like any conversation about that is a little dubious. Anybody selling cable, that's like less than a hundred dollars and telling you it's going to sound better that all those claims are a little dubious to me. Um, but I can't stop my customers from doing that. And I don't want to stop them from doing that. I would never do that. And luckily my customers who have made comments about Sonics and performance with our cables have all said glowing things about it. I haven't heard of anybody being disappointed in that aspect of it. So fortunately it's something we seem to be excelling at at the moment, but it's not something I'm ever going to brag about on my website or anything like that, if that makes any sense. It does. Uh, do you have any plans in the future to have uh, cables for IEMs? Yeah, so we, we do like an MMCX cable right now. And uh, I actually, and we, we have some two pin, I have personally like some two pin connectors here. If people ask for those as, on a custom order, I can do that for them, but I don't have them like, on the site available in mass yet eventually that's the plan but uh yeah 
but our IEM cable, we, we call it an IEM cable, but it's still the exact same cable design as what we use on our big cables. So it's a little beefier than what uh, most folks prefer for an IEM. Mm -hmm. That being said, I've had plenty of people buy the, uh, M the MMCX cable we offer, and they all seem to like it and haven't really had anybody want to return it because they were unhappy with it or anything like that. So I think it's a little more manageable than you would assume when you looked at pictures on the websites and stuff like that, although it is bigger than most uh, IEM cables. And I use one every day at work for myself. I have a pair of a uh, KZ, what are they? The, uh, well, KZ has several, the, the F dozens of IEMs. Yeah, the F10 Pro or something like that. I can't remember yeah. the exact model number. I use those at work every day with uh, one of our cables. So I actually use our, our products. <laughs> Good. So, well, you should. You should. Like uh, I said, it's just what I wanted personally, and I just happened to share it. So, so the way I, I – I, when I look at your company, when I first started looking at your website and our, to our conversations, I boiled down a couple of distinguishing markers between you and all the other competitors. And the first one was the price, which we already talked about, and the second one is the connection system that you created, which is, as right. far as I can tell, unique to you. And yeah. I, was, I was sitting there, and I was thinking about this, and I go, okay, so how would this work? Isn't this just about the equal cost? And then I realized, no, it's not, because you actually have a connection kit that has the vast majority of connections anybody's ever going to use. In fact, right. every single one that you sell is the one that I have one that's necessary for each and every one of my amplifiers, 2.5, 3.5, TRS, TRRS, XLR, 4.4. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have it. So could you give us an idea what prompted you to go down this route, which is totally unique as far as I know? So it, it's a few factors. Um, what started it initially was uh, my, my first, like, real pair of, audiophile headphones, which this may bring hate upon myself. It may not. I don't know. We're uh, some great. I hope you don't say beat. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> right, right. There's some great SR-225s, you know, and to further instigate hate against me, I actually like them a lot. They're like one of my favorite pair of headphones in my collection. But if I told you, I'm kind of deaf in the high range, so it's like kind of perfect <laughs> for me. But um, uh, so with those Grados, you know, they come with that built-in cable. You can't replace it. And that, that pair, you know, it comes with a quarter inch just straight up attached to the cable, and there's not much you can do about it. And I hate using those uh, adapters, like a quarter inch to three and a half millimeter or three and a half millimeter to quarter inch adapter. I'm just not a fan of them, mostly because I just lose them immediately. Um, so a couple of years ago, I was like, okay, I'm going to swap this out and put like a mini XLR on it and uh, use that to swap between – I, I really wanted to use those headphones balanced with my, at the time it was like the Onkyo DPX1 DAP. And uh, I couldn't because it, it didn't have a connector on it for it. So I, you know, went about just replacing it and, and screwing around with the four pin idea on that. And then uh, that was maybe two or three years ago. And then last year I was deciding I needed something else for myself and wanted to make cables again. And I, uh, you know, was looking at uh, just what I wanted for myself was like, I just wanted one cable that I can swap between a bunch of things. And that's where like the four pin idea comes into play. I remember seeing an earth sign do something like it, although it wasn't exactly what we're doing. And then the other thing <laughs> was when I started the idea of like, okay, if I want to sell this, you know, I, there were two really main complaints I had when I was shopping around for custom cables, and that was the price, and then the two was the lead times. And, you know, at the time, Ursine's lead time was like three months, and then Perry Apps was two weeks. And, you know, uh, in the culture we are, like, you just want everything immediately, right? So right. I was like, if, if we could come up with a way to make the cables immediately and have them ship within a day or two days or whatever – I think people would really like that, especially if they're at a lower price point. It's like, okay, well, maybe you're not a huge fan of red, but you're going to get ours within a week, whereas you might wait, have to wait a while and pay $100 more somewhere else. You know what I mean? So and, what is your um, lead time currently? Right now, it's three weeks. This is what's, what kills me and gives me anxiety at night, was because the whole idea behind it was to keep the lead time at two days. 
but we just got so many orders it grew so fast i just couldn't keep up with it you know what i mean so mm-hmm. so a way to keep cost down standardized designs and everything was also this four pin xlr idea that i had been using personally and uh cuz cuz now with with headphones like you're selling a headphone on a website you got to have a drop down that tells that where you pick how do you want to terminate it right mm-hmm. well now we can get rid of that cuz we terminate all of our headphones to the same thing that that basically cuts the amount of SKUs we have to stock in half. You know what I mean? We can we can make the cables before they're ordered this way. We we uh terminate everything to a four pin mini XLR and uh all the unique connections, there's not as many of them, right? So we can have them all ready made and ready to go. And then in addition to that, we we just chose three lengths, you know, that are basically what, what you would, would need, the three inch, one foot and four foot for interconnects and then all of our headphone cables come in a four and a half foot length. So doing those things just really narrows down the skew count for your business. And so that, that is what is going to allow us to maintain like a one or two day lead time in terms of getting things shipped. But, uh, we gotta, we gotta scale up first. That's what we've been fighting this last few months here is just trying to scale up and meet demand. Cause, uh, when I launched it in September, I did have like a lot of stuff built up already, you know, in preparation for launch. And then by the time it sort of took off or whatever, I just sold through that stuff so quick. And then it was just a matter of playing catch up. And there's other things that have contributed to the three week lead time in uh, November. We, uh, we like just straight up ran out of parts (laughs) and I had to wait on parts to get here. And then uh, also in November, my wife went into the hospital for appendicitis, she had to get her appendix taken out. So there was a, a couple of days there where I, we have two kids. So there's a couple of days there where I, you know, I'm, I basically can't work. And then follow that up three weeks later. And uh, we find out that they found cancer in her appendix when she had the appendicitis. So, you know, find out my wife has cancer and uh, that's been a, a big thing, you know, going on in my life at the same time as the business has been growing. So it's been a challenge to try to uh, pay as much attention, attention to it as needs to, to try to meet that two day demand. It just hasn't been able to happen. You know what I mean? That's why, uh, that's why it's still three weeks right now. I hate that too, man. It's like, uh, every day that we, we are, uh, still shipping stuff out at three weeks. It's like, man, I wish we could just get ahead. Why can't we get ahead? You know, but well, uh, one thing I, I do appreciate is that you and I have, i looked at my email channel. You and I exchanged, I think 40 emails. And I and I really do appreciate the way that you were prompted with your responses. You were very direct and you provided all the answers. Uh, is that something that you try to do or your staff tries to do? If somebody emails you a question, are you fairly quick with response time? Uh, I try to be, yeah, especially if they ask me a question about like an order. Like uh, I always tell everybody, like if I see a, an email with an order number in the subject line, it's like instant anxiety because there's got to be some sort of issue to do with it, you know, <laughs> but uh, mostly it's people asking about like, what, where, why hasn't my stuff shipped yet? You know, cause we have it on the site that it's a three week lead time, but I, I guess people miss it or folks who aren't native English speakers maybe miss it when they're shopping. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's like, a, I mean, I just try to be nice to people. I don't know. I mean, I think like the whole point of this thing is, to try to provide value to the customers and, and sell stuff at a lower price point. And it's just like, you know, we're all humans on either end of this deal. And I try to remember that when we're interacting with customers and when I'm interacting with my employees and, and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't want to leave people hanging on email and I try to be as responsive as I can. And I certainly don't want them to get the idea that I'm rude or don't care about their business or anything like that. So, yeah, that's I mean, good. It's especially bad if you're trying to grow your business. So, yeah, that's a good thought. Uh, so, so speaking of native speakers, uh, English speakers, do you ship your products to any other country besides the United States or North America? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I've sold I've sold all over the world so far. I mean, I wish I had like a little uh, pin map. I could be. Uh, marking marking countries off but uh yeah we, we we sell almost anywhere i mean i think the u.s has like a blacklist of countries that we're not supposed to sell to so we follow that but other, other than that 
we will. Uh, what was that? Is, is that right? The United States has a, a blacklist for who, where you can't sell to. I think they do. I mean, I think it's like a short list. I mean, I've never had to deal with it yet. So, um, uh, yeah, we'll you, sell you, pretty much anywhere. Yeah. So you you've, you've been mentioned you've been uh, you started in September. That was September 2019. Yeah. So yeah. So just yesterday, essentially, as far as companies go. <laughs> right, right. We have not been around long. And you shared some some data with me about your growth. I'm not going to talk about the actual numbers, but you you did give me some information about percentage increase. And if that's okay, we'll, we'll talk about that a little sure, bit. Sure, sure. So uh, you started September. Hello, oh, sorry about that. That's my dog. You started September 2019, and in mm-hmm. October you had a 1,520 percent increase between September and October. <laughs> right, uh, right. Was that a surprise to you that you jumped up 1,500% in orders between the, the month that you started and the following month? Um, I don't know. I mean, I felt like you always temper expectations when you're, like, doing something you care about and putting it out in the world. Uh, you know, you don't want to set yourself up for disappointment or anything like that. But I remember – when I was getting the business ready, I was like, man, I feel like this is a good idea. And usually whenever I think I have a good idea, there's the, the other shoe drops and it reminds me that, oh, it wasn't a good idea to begin with. You know what I mean? Like uh, you get slapped back down to reality. And the whole time I was leading up to launching the company, I was like trying to find out what is this thing I'm missing? Why, why, what is wrong with my business plan here? What's wrong with this idea I had? I couldn't find it. And that <laughs> kind of, it's weirdly like made me worry that I was missing something, but um, yeah, when we when I launched it in September, it, and it was just pretty much word of mouth going into October, it was pretty um, surprising and exciting how quickly it uh, it grew. And then I think I don't know if you're going to get to it, but October to November, it it went it, it went even further, and that was really really crazy and nutty. And it was it was a combination of excitement and uh, being terrified because I knew I couldn't meet the demand with just me and like the one other person that was helping me out with stuff at the time. So it was like, Oh man, I actually have to start hiring people and uh, grow in the capacity of this thing. If I want to meet all this demand. So. Yeah. You've been, you've been growing month over month based upon your, um, the right. stuff that you gave right. me. And it, it seems to be increasing over the next month, every month. So September, to November, it was an additional 70% increase. And then from uh, above that, you had another increase. So it looks like you, you're getting good orders, good, good number of orders. <laughs> right, right, yeah. I, I uh, actually, like, you know, from end of October to December, basically Christmas time, it had just been balls to the wall, either working on the business or, I mean, it still is this way, but uh, it had just been balls to the wall working on the business or at my job or, you know, taking care of my family. And I hadn't really had time to stop and look at like just how much we had shipped or sold or whatever. And then I, I, at the end of December, I forced myself to take a week off basically uh, just because, you know, your own sanity and it was Christmas time. So, um, and, and I, I went and looked at the numbers <laughs> and it was like, what we've, we've uh, shipped like over, you know, X amount of cables. I could not believe the number and um, the amount of orders we had had. I just could not believe it. It was um, it's pretty pretty insane. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been fun, stressful, well, good. Fun. So, what one of the things that that I think is really important for everybody, especially for businesses, is to be self critical, reasonably self critical. Oh yeah, we've got that where stage, you need to yeah. go. <laughs> So could you, you tell me, tell. based upon just the, you know, I know you've been in business for a relatively short time, but there are there some things you can tell us you really do want to improve or you want to change for the customer's better experience in the future? Well, I really want that lead time to be what I intended it to be. I feel like we, there's like two big pillars on what I wanted to do with the product, and we're accomplishing one, and that's the price point, you know, and the quality. But uh, the other one, I wanted to accomplish was that lead time and where we haven't been able to knock that out yet. So I feel like that, that would be, I mean, I, I'm surprised the business has grown as much as it has when people have a three week lead time to wait for their cables. So um, I feel like if we can get that down, that'll be a huge deal. And then uh, improving otherwise, I mean, just uh, our team, just, you know, 
we just got to keep getting better. And, and uh, you know, most folks I've had to hire on, you know, they don't, they're not into headphone cables. They're like, oh, I thought all headphones were Bluetooth now. You know what I mean? They, they don't even, they're not even aware of this hobby or this uh, realm of space, you know? So uh, just getting my, my uh, employees up to speed and uh, familiar with the product and familiar with the customers and things like that. Uh, that's all, all things you want to get better at. And the quality, I mean, I, I sent you some of our quality numbers, and I, I feel pretty proud about those. I mean, they've been really, really, really good so far. Uh, like, we shipped out, you know, thousands of cables, and it's like less than half a percent have failed in the field so far. And that, for me, going from me working in my bedroom, in my office at the house, to uh, an actual facility with a team and everything, I feel like it's pretty good that we've been able to maintain that. So, um but we do want to keep getting that number lower as low as we can. And then, uh, what, what could I do better, man? You tell me you're, you're a customer sort of. <laughs> well, uh, I, I don't really know it at, at this point. And, you know, I, the two things that I always look for when I buy cables is, is it affordable? And number two, is it of good quality? I'm, I'm not one of those people that says you absolutely need to get silver cable or OCC. I mean, it, that stuff has no traction with me. Mm-hmm. So I, I think you know, after buying your kit and uh, one of the cables is that I, 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 I was a little skeptical about the whole system sure, and when sure. I started using it. And then I realized this really makes a whole lot of sense because people who have one or two headphones, but I have potentially want to actually experiment with DACs and amplifiers with mm-hmm. you know, different players. It makes no sense for them to go out and spend another fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty dollars for another cable for every right, one of their right. other sources. And having you know, spending either seventy five dollars, I think that's what your kit costs, seventy five dollars for the kit for the connection system, and then having one cable, that makes total sense to me. Yeah, so that's I, kind of where I was. Yeah. It, people who have a lot of gear especially, I mean, it makes a lot of sense for them and then it makes it really easy to A-B stuff. Like if you go to a meetup and you want to use somebody else's gear and try multiple headphones, it's very easy to just swap between things. And I kind of like that about it. Yeah, and, and I think that it, it it just works. And I am a little shocked with myself that I have not seen any other company even try to navigate through this. Because it seems like I, a very <laughs> simple idea. And in right. practice, it makes complete sense. And it's I, I think people um, don't get it part of it is is like if you win a customer and you're going to get a repeat customer would you rather them come back and buy a $12 interconnect or come back and buy an $80 headphone cable <laughs> so it makes better business sense to not really do the modular thing I think maybe on some level like you make more money when people are buying a full headphone cable and you know that's not really the main goal of this for me so I guess I'm in a position where I can do that for people so there there is one thing that uh did jump out at me, which is I prefer longer cable runs just yeah. because I have I have stuff all around me, and I sure. I typically prefer about seven feet. Uh, does your website have an option on there where you can just click seven foot cable and then you know to make that? No, so like like I said, all of our headphone cables on the site are four and a half feet, and and the, the decision making behind that was like, you know, just me. I work at a day job at a desk, you know, and. Four and a half feet felt like the right length to me. I, I went and like took stock cables from all the headphones I had and measured them. And four and a half feet seemed to be about where everybody was at. And seemed to be about normal. So I went with that. And, you know, if we add, like, if we immediately add, like, like right now we have 10 headphone cable. Excuse me. And just like we have 10 headphone cable designs that we make and try to have put in a bin and ready to ship right and of course that's not the reality because as soon as we make it we're shipping it right now but in the future you know that's that's the way it would be and um if we were to offer multiple lengths like let's say we do offer a seven foot length now then that immediately means we have to keep up make and keep up with 40 uh unique designs of product it it doesn't matter that's just the length changing it's still just a unique uh, like part number or a unique unit we have to manage right um so in an effort to keep costs down and lead times down, our stock product, you know, we're just going to keep the one length for now. Um, but, I mean, I, I don't think it's too difficult for people to, you know, just message me on the custom shop and, and uh, 
request another length. You know, I, I don't I don't charge a huge amount to uh, increase the lengths or anything like that. We just uh, apply our normal margin multiplier to it and and go from there. And I mean, if people <laughs> if I give somebody a quote on a custom shop, people say it's too expensive. I'm I'm willing to work with them too. Right? That hasn't really happened so far yet. I guess our prices are just stupidly low or whatever. But uh, I I think they're perfect. <laughs> As a consumer, I can say that your your prices are are really really competitive and very good. Uh, and and I and I I'd attribute your month over month growth to having such an affordable product that's also of excellent quality. It's so hard to find stuff that's really built really well in the United States and is still affordable for the vast majority of people. Right, right. I mean, it's just it's just uh, capitalism, man. It's like. You, you're not doing it right if you're not squeezing out every bit of profit. And, and then that's not like a knock on anybody. That is like how the system works. And that's the only way to excel in the system. But luckily, you know, my life doesn't depend on this business and I'm able to, you know, <laughs> make $2 a sale instead of three or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, so you were talking a, a little bit about having a half a percent you know, failure rate with all the products that you have shipped, which is frankly, pretty excellent. Uh, do, do you offer any type of warranty for every product that goes out of your shop? So, so far, I have not been able to write up like an official warranty or anything. It, the, the, the policy we have basically right now is like, don't be a dick, you know, <laughs> it's kind of the, the, what we're trying to go with is just take care of the customer, do what's right for them, you know, and we'll, we'll figure it out later. I don't really care. Like, you know, I, the most somebody's had, the longest somebody's had our cable right now is five months, right? Something like that. So it, it's hard to tell if something's going wrong within that that amount of time. It's generally going to be the manufacturer's fault. You know what I mean? So the vast majority of cases right now, it's like we uh, we will just go ahead and replace the cable and make sure you're taken care of, and that, that's what we try to do as best we can. I think. The only other issues we find is, is folks get a little confused about what they're ordering. You know, they're, they're maybe not familiar with what the different connection types are. They don't know that a three and a half millimeter TRRS is different from a three and a half millimeter TRS and uh, stuff like that. Or, or they don't realize that just because you order a balanced cable doesn't mean it's going to run balanced in your phone. You know what I mean? Like you have to have a balanced source and stuff like that. So we, we and even in those cases, I mean, we take care of the customer and we just go ahead and replace what they've got and just ask them to send it back to us. It's no big deal. I mean, for me, I'd rather lose a little money and take the take care of the customer than like argue over every penny. It's just not worth the effort and stress and and the uh, negative experience you're going to give the customer. You know what I mean? I do. So, so is there? I, re I realize any... that eventually we will have to have a warranty and official page on the site for that, but I need to get some sleep first and we'll have time to think about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I completely understand. But if you're willing to work with your customers, that that's the most important thing. There are plenty of companies that have warranties written. Or, mm -hmm. for example, Monolith has apparently a warranty. You just don't know what it is. And there are right, plenty of companies right. that have written warranties, and it's really right, hard to get right. them to agree to it. So, right. you know, as long as you're willing to work with the customer, I think that's the fundamental issue. Um, it mm -hmm. sounds like you, you're more than willing to do that. Yeah, yeah. So is there anything that you would like my subscribers, my viewers to know about your company or you that you think might be helpful for them to make a decision whether or not to buy your product? Oh, man. Um, now I'll just say thanks if you bought a cable or something like that. I appreciate it if you've emailed me and spoken to me. I appreciate all of the uh, correspondence I've had with everybody out there. Uh, I, I mean, I will say, like, I'm really impressed with the uh, – hi-fi community when I, when I, you know, I, I said, I mentioned earlier, my wife got cancer and everything. And I had to basically email customers and say, look, it's not going to happen this week. I'm, I'm not going to be able to get order shipped. And the response was just amazing how, how supportive everybody was and how understanding everybody's been. And, and throughout the whole process, it's been, um, it's been really, uh, really, uh, I, I guess it's restored my faith in humanity a little bit, you know, it's just been really positive and, and, uh, eye-opening how nice and, and understanding folks are. I tell them, look, you know, it's a new business. We've got some growing pains. We're, we're trying our best. They all seem to take it in stride. You're one of them. You know, I had to delay your 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 shipment for quite a while. And, um, yeah, I'm really appreciative of all that stuff. And, 
if folks try our stuff, I hope they like it and just want them to know we're trying our best. You know what I mean? I do. Well, thank you so much. I think that uh, I, I hope that your company continues to grow, and I suspect that it will. Um, oh, one know. one thing I do need to add. Though. Um, I think we are going to have to pause sales on our, our web store uh, for the next couple weeks here. I don't know when this video is going to go live, but with the coronavirus and everything, it is like throwing off shipping everywhere, all over the world. It's like we are having trouble getting stuff from our U.S. suppliers, having stuff trouble getting stuff from our international suppliers. And so just being in the position we're in as, as a small company, we don't have a lot of leverage to just uh, strong arm our way into getting our inventory we need. So I may be pausing sales on the store till March or so, which sucks to say when this video is coming out. But uh, I, I just don't know if I have another choice at, at this point. Would you would you accept orders, but with the caveat that everybody knows nothing's going to be done until at least March? Yeah, I would be happy to do that. Uh, you know, I, I could I could maybe I'll have to see what the best route to take is. You know, I I want if if, if I do do that, I want to make sure every customer knows that that's what the, the situation is, right? I don't want them to think they're they're going to get their cable in three weeks and it's a month and they're still waiting. You know. Mm -hmm. So that's something we need to think about. I think I've seen a bunch of other uh, businesses having similar issues right now. It's just uh, that coronavirus thing, man. It's it's a uh, it's crazy. That's that's everything I can see and read on the news. Um, yeah, but hopefully they'll get it under control soon. Right. So if this video goes out, you go to the site and you can't buy anything. You can email me. Let me know what you'd like or or just understand we'll, we'll get it out as soon as we can in March. That's probably when we'll get it back going again. But uh, we will be back if we do, if we do uh, pause sales. Okay. Well, James, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to let me interview you. That This was very enjoyable for me, and uh, I hope that this is helpful for my viewers and uh, you get more business out of it. Yeah, man, I enjoyed it too. I really appreciate it. No problem. Take care. I wish the best for you and your family. And, um, and if you need anything from our community, please let us know. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Here's what I make of all of this so far. In my business, I have to talk to people all the time. I have to judge credibility every day. I have to figure out if I can trust someone and carefully examine people's promises and claims. I think I'm a fairly good judge in this regard. My months-long interaction with James has been noteworthy. We must all judge credibility individually. A person I find credible, you might find less so. For what it's worth, I have to say that throughout my interactions with James, I believe he is genuine. His explanations about his products and ethos resonate with me. His willingness to be open to discuss his business is quite refreshing. His promise to keep the customer foremost in his dealings is not only proper for every merchant, but becoming more and more unique. When I look at his products, the items I purchased, I think that James's words and values seem to show in his work product. I am thoroughly impressed. In the following video, I will review my Heart Audio Cables. I hope you'll see why Heart is truly a big deal. It's not just a different way of making a product, it's also how you experience the product in the end result. For now, I hope you enjoyed my conversation with James, and if you get a chance, go and check out his website at heartaudiocables.com.